Good evening, my name is Christopher Butner. On September 4th, 2023, I submitted a Public Records Act request to the City Attorney, White Brenner LLP, for the executed, uh, uh, executed amended agreement for the promotion of tourism entered into between the City of Angels Municipal Corporation and the Calaveras Visitors Bureau, a nonprofit association authorized by Resolution 23-02, unanimously approved by the City Council on January 3rd, 2023. On September 14, 2023, I was informed by the City Attorney that the City had determined my request described identifiable records that were disclosable under the Public Records Act, and I was provided with a digital copy of the City Council's executed resolution number 23-02. I was additionally informed on that date by the City Attorney that the city, city was still searching its files responsive to my request for the signed tourism agreement and required as much as an additional 14 days to conduct its search. On September 27, 2023, I was informed by the city attorney that the city did not have any additional records responsive to my Public Records Act request dated September 4, 2023, for the executed agreement for the promotion of tourism. Quoting the city attorney, after a thorough search, staff is unable to locate the executed agreement. I respectfully request of this city council that the city resumes and successfully concludes its search for the missing agreement for the promotion of tourism so that my Public Records Act request dated September 4th, 2023 for identifiable records that were disclosable under the Public Records Act may be fulfilled in a timely manner. To that point, I shall plan to return to the next City Council meeting two weeks from this evening on October 17th to address this in greater detail should my September 4, 2023 Public Records Act request for the executed amended agreement for the promotion of tourism not have been met by that time. Thank you very much and good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. 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 Th
Um, but this is just uh, in response to the, the concern that I think were expressed by some of the council members about the information that I have. And so I have brought, I was hoping to have the, um, the actual proposal to the city, but I don't have that yet. Uh, but this is the um, plan. This was done in May and it's been sitting around for a long time. I'm going to leave it over here. Okay. And, and I have um, several, well, actually, all of the uh, requirements that were, I was told from that, that um, I had to uh, get engineers to say that what I said was right, and they changed some things and they make it right. Uh, there was one on solar, there was uh, the indoor sprinkler system, just to it's to uh, put up fires. And there is the water well information. Uh, there's some other things that I have on this disc, and I'll leave it for you to look at. And uh, I'm really sorry I don't have the full proposal to get to, but I sure did work on it. And so that's what I was trying to say. Any other public comments? Okay. Are you going to take this road? Yeah. Okay. Oh, not quite. And that's for us to keep, Mike? Well, there is. Okay. Perfect. So I just want to make sure all the reference that, that documents that you've left will go to our floor plan. Okay. Our, our building. Sure. Sure. There's not four copies, correct? Right? So, you know, okay. We don't oversee that. But I've got to put together a real proposal for the building. This is just an example. Okay, do you like that? So this is just for us to look at. Yes. And you can hear us online if you do have a public comment, you can raise your hand, I believe, or you'll see that your hand is raised and then we'll call on you. Seeing no additional public comment, we will move on to item six, which is consent agenda. We have two items on consent for consideration. Can you have any no. for either of these items? Any member of the public? Okay, seeing that, I'll be looking for a motion for consent. So. Motion. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Regular agenda. Item 7A is the Utica Park. Actually, the Rural Recreation and Tourism Program Utica Park Widener Mine Expansion Project update from each house. Hey, with council members, I direct community to the street. We have released a newsletter, and anybody who is watching online or is present who would like to receive updates regarding the park, they are invited to scan the QR code or send an email to CBA. And then we put you on our email list. So basically, the first part of the newsletter was emailed to each individual. We have also notified everybody who can receive some additional time. We've also met with a few additional time. If you have a correction on our report, that should affect the firm as a fact on the So they are Getting up there to the floor by the stakeholders of the design committee. They've had our first meeting of the committee that is putting together a research choice and storage interview with the trail, uh, the signage, which we're going to go to the design committee. And we do have our first cut ground, how they play ground design. 
at the October 18th community stakeholders design committee meeting. And so basically after that, we'll then start working on the outdoor exercise equipment, the park tours, the interpreted sign, and uh, the outdoor traffic order. I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay, question. I have a question. Somewhere I read it. You will be able to. Where will we be able to find that? It will be posted online and will also be sent to everybody who signed up for the QR code. And then when I was looking at the budget, I noticed um, the two questions. One was the air construction total cost of twenty one thousand three hundred forty five funded that or what was that for? That was for paying some of their own sub who had been doing some actual design work, um, not design work, um, some survey work, that type of thing. They have to pay for that. Is the Capers Tree Service setting up the our meeting last month is stable. Um, Michelle pulled it up about the actual issues that was something. Okay. And we clarified that just with the phone. So, what happens with the tree training um, is that not 100% of it is charged to the grant. It had some of its normal operations and maintenance. So if there was a seven hundred and seventy six dollars for the general fund or to Chris's budget. So then I'm just what I'm fearful is that last meeting we said eighty seven hundred. This one we're saying that was like seventeen hundred and probably all of it. Oh, there are different entities. So a third category um, general fund, right? For right. regular maintenance, and well, that's coming out of general. Well, it doesn't have, but it doesn't have anything to do with the park. Yeah. Okay. And I, I thought I thought we I thought there was clarification about that. Like there was some general fund stuff that it doesn't have to do maintenance. Yeah. That sometimes we see on the accounts payable, but it's not going to be reflected outside of the park. Okay. Well, I just wanted to. Okay. Do you also want that in writing at the next meeting, um, council? Or I think it's efficient to have been. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, moving on to item 7B. Um, this is the second reading to hold the public hearing to consider adopting ordinance 534 re relocating housing related codes to a new chapter of 17.52 housing with amendments to section 1706.200 reasonable accommodation allowing some administrative approvals and clarifying 1706.170 accessory bill. There are council members this is basically organizational and procedural um, it takes all of the housing information we already have in our code and moves it to a new section so that it's easier for people to find the housing information and it adds a provision for reasonable accommodation that allows staff to do in-house approvals again reasonable accommodation of things like grants for disabled people who would need to use a wheelchair um, who would be able to a minor that just going to setback if somebody needs to do that after notifying the joint property owners um, so that's the other change there and again one of our Sharbai planning commissioners has out for a final change in section 17 with 2070 regarding the effective date of low barrier navigation sector legislation it has the words unless otherwise extended by the state we added that's on the first page of that report because otherwise it will expire in 2027 and we all expect that the legislature we don't want to move the anything be happy to answer any questions what was that number again <laughs> that one that had it 1752 070 which oh, gotcha. is highlighted right. on page right. one any other questions? Members of the public? Seeing none, um, coming back, we'd be looking for approval of this ordinance. I will make the ordinance. I second. Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Taking us on to item 7C, this is also a public hearing. Um, to waive the second reading, hold a public hearing considering adoption of Ordinance 535, allowing the city planner discretion to approve additional use permits for projects valued at less than 250000 and exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. Mayor and council members, we already have a provision similar to this, allowing the city planner to do administrative site plan reviews um, and conditional, some conditional use permits for specific purposes, administrative condition use permits. We discovered uh, recently that we've been having a decent number of people who want salons in the building where there are already salons, small business owners who want to to a new salon and it takes an extra amount of time to go to the planning commission. We're asking that we be allowed to do it administratively, do it administratively in-house uh, to shorten the time period. Again, it could still be appealed. Uh, no property owners or even theaters still notified, the public would still not participate. It just would have to be process for primarily very small. We have to answer that. Is the $250,000 that go in other business things without the return of the It's um, so basically when you apply, you talk about what the valuation of your business is. Um, generally, it's because you might be making minor improvements to the building, and we usually value those. If that's not the case, then we can help them do an estimate of what the valuation of their business would be. Um, so there are tables in the building code that will help with the valuation. Questions? Any comments from the public? Okay, great. In fact, I'd be looking for a motion for the ordinance on uh, NC. 
make that motion to adopt the ordinance by three five. Dr. And I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Dr. Von Court over. Item 7D, this is a big one. This is to waive the first reading and hold this public hearing to consider adoption ordinance by 36, renaming chapter 17.06 as general provisions and exceptions and adding, consolidating, amending, or updating provisions for mobile food vendors, garage sale, temporary construction trailers, recreation vehicles, storage and living, special events, special events permits, certificates of occupancy, storage containers, cottage food operations and movie sets, amending and updating excessive slope, temporary and seasonal sales stand, acceptable farming and ranching practices, construction and floodplains, occupancy changes in commercial buildings and commercial zones, and eliminating, el eliminating standards for auto wrecking yards. Eight. Mayor, council members, as mentioned in the last meeting, and by the way, this is waiting the second reading, sorry, I'm not going to see I had a typo oh. on the read, but sorry, recommendation. Um, when you do codes, there's always a bunch of stuff that you need to address that doesn't necessarily go in a nice type of chapter. So everybody puts it in something called general provisions and exceptions. So it is a very long chapter usually, and it usually has a very wide range of topics. Um, this is an exception. Uh, the new things in here are storage containers, cottage food operations, movie sets, those are the primary new items that have not been in the code before. Things that have been in the code before but are being consolidated in one place and where we're removing redundancy and certificate clear in one place, with mobile food vendors, certificates of occupancy, garage sales are actually new because we had not garage sales before, construction trailers, RVs, um, Slopes have always been in there, home walks have always been in there, acceptable farming and ranching practices have always been there, sale of alcoholic beverages, street improvements, construction of floodplain, and occupancy changes in commercial zones. Those were already there before, and there's relatively minor changes in those. Um, we are eliminating standards for auto wrecking yards, so it has we no longer permit those within the city limits, so we no longer need standards. And I did want to uh, clarify from the last meeting. Um, I understood a question to be, how, where did we get some of these? Uh, for example, storage containers, cottage food operations. Um, I took those from other jurisdictions. Uh, storage containers came from Walton County. Cottage food operations came from the city of Sonora. Picked them up, dropped them in. Were those reviewed by the city attorney? Those were reviewed Cottage food operations were reviewed in 2013 by the then city attorney of the city of Sonora, and storage containers were reviewed by the council of Tomorrow. So those were not reviewed by our city attorney, they were reviewed for legal content and added to this chapter. I think I'll ask just if there are questions, and there is one additional change here. Cottage food operation. I did not include a provision that's on page two of your staff report. Provide the planning commission asked that we remove a requirement that required that did not allow cottage food operations to be within 300 feet of each other. And I will also add that cottage food operations, there's something already permitted by state law. You haven't option to add conditions to them. If you do not exercise that option, it goes strictly to what state law says. What we were doing here with cottage food operations is trying to bring them more into par with our home occupations that we already have, one. And two, there are some people who have been doing them who did not first get their health department certificate that we were concerned about people becoming sick from Oh, 
Yeah, it was 1999 originally, and then 2002 ish, somewhere in there, uh, was nothing. But hourly, not to my knowledge. I, I don't know if they review things when they review the agenda or not. It hasn't been a Prior to this agenda or prior to the so what what type of outreach has gone on with it other than these meetings and or the planning uh, the planning meeting it depends or it depends on if we know somebody who might specifically be affected by it mm -hmm. yeah. we would not find them so like the gas station one we notified the gas station in town that we knew existed we notified individually um anyone we knew who was conflict um, in this case, we have no way of knowing who may or may not want to do a cottage food operation or who may or may not be planning to do a storage. So, you might hear about a bad cottage food <laughs> <laughs> operator. I get a call we, about that, right. but we did in fact. Yeah. yeah. Do we know of storage containers that are in existence? I know of one. And did you reach out to that? I did not. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, how do you not enforce the storage containers? Just all of the provisions. In the same way that we enforce everything in the city. Um, right now, it's simply generated. Um, I will add that iWorks has made it a little easier to do some post uh, compliance. Uh, things like the more that we require people to get business licenses, the easier it is for us. You know what's going on. So basically, um, global food vendors, those things should be safe for sure. We usually get complaints about them. They're usually on somebody's property and don't have their permission. They are often held trans right away, and somebody will call us almost That is one of the reasons most of these are here. Is so that when we do get a complaint, our code compliance officer is going to that specific section and say, This is what I am enforcing. Right now, some of these are not clear, or they're ambiguous, or they conflict in different parts of the code. <clears throat> Any public comments? Um, I'm just like the third of the 1940 in the line. Um, I would like to just reserve my right to offer written comments uh, for one week so that I can read chapter 1706, uh, which may have uh, adverse effects on my uh, living circumstances. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> So this is the second reading for this ordinance. So we would actually potentially be considering action on this item tonight. Two weeks ago was the first reading and public outreach. So we'll keep that in consideration here. Good. Okay. Okay. Any other public comment? Then I'll move. Okay, so bringing it back. Um, I think this does have a lot of impact on, I mean, countless uh, different scenarios and, and types of businesses and, and effects of people in the city. And I think I would like some more time on this personally, especially because although a legal counsel has reviewed it and our co compliance might, might be a fan of this, I would definitely like to run it by our legal counsel for obvious reasons. So I'm I'm not a fan of this ordinance being passed tonight for those reasons. Um, but I'll let what the other specifically is the issue that storage containers and the legal, legal counsel there's new provisions and then there are a, 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 yeah there's, 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 there's 2013 19 I think I'd like to have 
just just for accountability, just to make sure that we're not. I mean, the, no, he's a yeah. yeah, that's my reason. So that that's what I'll speak. So I'll let everybody. And if, and if that's the direction we want to do, is we can actually just submit. Okay. And so that would get the goal of the ability to review. We could take it so to the to the next. Yeah, again, a continuation with my serve, so we don't have to remingle it with the grade. Does October 17th give you guys sufficient time to review? Okay. Yeah. October 17th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, and then can I, would it be appropriate then in the meantime if there's anybody that we should try to notify that we know is being affected by this with an existing storage container or cottage food operation or anything, let's make sure that we do try to, not uh, not a lot of people come to our meetings, not a lot of people join us online, but boy howdy, we'll hear from those that are affected negatively or impacted in some way uh, without having gotten a notification. So I, any notification we could do would be best. I, I can only, I do miss the test one. I, 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 I may miss people. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, but we'll do what we can. Appreciate that. Okay, so can I get a motion? That's the motion. Yes, please. I'd like to make the motion to continue this item uh, to October 17th. Second. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Moving right along, we have item 7E. This is the second reading, uh, wait, the second reading, hold this public hearing, consider adopting ordinance 538, adding a new section 17.06210, addressing vacant buildings. Thank you. Mayor council members, um, it's my understanding that you would also like to continue this in order to allow for um, the city attorney to review it. I would ask that you go ahead and provide input to staff so that if there are big changes to this you'd like to see, if you can express any concerns you might have so that the council does not have to review an ordinance that you perhaps um, find the data flaw in. I think that that would be a good time possible. And again, for public input. I would be happy to answer any questions that I have on public answer related to the vacant property codes. Um, yeah. Any questions? So, just have to talk about it. Hypothetical. It would depend upon the significance of the change if they're minded or something. I have a, a legal question that I would like to have tied in with this. Is that um, regarding the fee, um, we talked about like a, a flat fee um, to cover the cost the city. Um, I would like to know if if we did something um, above and beyond that, the cost of what it costs the city to go do at these vacant buildings. Um, if they are we allowed to increase that, um, like by square footage or something like that? Based on square footage, correct. Is that legal? Well, yeah, and I think it goes back to the actual top yeah. There's a fee. Correct. I want to know so, the fine is legally. Are we allowed to see that, or <coughs> at what point, or like? But I just don't know what the parameters are. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Alan. To know the fee structure for me, and then the fee versus fine. Um. I don't want to make it small enough where it doesn't hurt. That makes sense. I I, I do I do want people to get their business and have them pull. And, and there were a lot of people that spoke out that have his downtown and that kind of thing. I'm all for it. So I don't know if a dollar a square foot or yeah. I just don't know if four hundred dollars is enough. I mean, there's I think more than that. So that for me, the be structure and it's. I would like more clarification on commercial versus residential. That's just going to be my question. Real property, or industrial. So if I'm reading this correctly, if I have a house that's vacant, or excuse me, one month here, 
they would then be obligated to this, correct? Right. Six, unless you propose a um, an alternative to this code, there there are ways of waiving the as it were. The code enforcement officer can do that if they find that they have a local property manager who is complying with all of the local maintenance codes. There is a way for them to do a waiver on that. Okay. So it's essentially the same for everybody. It, it's, it was the same for everybody in here. Um, some people just do commercial, some people do commercial and residential. Most of the ones that do residential do so in order to increase the housing. And how do we come to, to this? It's been requested for quite some time by especially property owners in the downtown area. They've been asking that we do something so that economic development would be improved, especially in this part district. So not specifically what they're asking for, but we just incorporated it into the We We included residential. The primary request came from commercial. So I personally would like to do that. More specific. Specific or removed? More specific. I would, like the removed. I would like the residential. I would like the residential removed. I don't have any appetite for the residential any part of this. I feel that we already have the compliance and um, that can that can affect I mean there's always gonna be the, the the houses the residential houses that are not kept up or that are blight and, and squatters and things like that. But code compliance is the mechanism to enforce that, and they don't have any appetite for it being in this. That's my personal. Oh, I agree. I don't think there's So maybe that would then, unfortunately, warrant this being revised to have to go back to planning. Does that a significant enough change? I, it's sort of a 50 50. Yeah, I 100% appreciate the economic development aspect of this and the intent and i think downtown has spoke um, abundantly about the need for something like this i just don't think this at the way that this is worded is, is doing for me that's across the board so that would be what i would read tonight i'll, I'll wait for my so i'd like to make a motion that we do we still have to do public comment? I think I'd like to open it up and hear from our public tonight and see um, what other information they have which would be well received. Hello, Julie Douglas, Proud to Chasing Company. Um, I'm also here to speak on behalf of the Angels Camp Business Association. Um, as a board, we have also reviewed um the, the potential ordinance and just to let you know we support this direction that it's going um, so that is one thing um, well it's important to our members especially that just don't have problems in the area because this is in that area um, in regards to like you know trying to to sort of like um i have more question um, than comment um, regarding the fee and fine. I felt like last meeting there was a number, I know Amy had brought out several different numbers that she had gotten from other jurisdictions. Um, so you're talking like, I thought we talked like 450 or something was thrown out there. Is that the registration fee? Or was that the fine? That was the fee to register. Right, 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 right. Okay. And then, uh, so we haven't really settled on the fee yet for, okay. So I was thinking about this. Um, I'm kind of, I vocalized it last time that I think that needs to be a higher number, you know, I mean, as far as penalty or whatever. But is there something, and maybe this is for legal. Um, I, I was talking to somebody about this, and they said, well, what does the city do with that money? And I explained, well, um, the registration money, and I thought maybe part of the, of the penalty um, or fine. Um, I know I explained how it was to take care of um, 
you know, police have to be called, fire, safety, help, all of that. But if you do go with a higher fee as part of the planning process, could that money be used for economic development as far as, let's say, somebody does want to rent the work until and she can actively rent it to somebody? And you may apply, you know, you can use for a grant or they can apply and get some of that money to help start the business. Or really for any of those that do. I don't think that's possible, but I'm not just a thought. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Oh, uh, hi. My name is Sarah. I own the Lemon Street Bakery and a coffee shop on Main Street. This week I celebrated three successful years. I am grateful to have the support of my community and am grateful to the council for their service to our city. I have two major areas of concern for our downtown and several smaller ones. First, I think there is a, a dire need to address the vacant buildings on Main Street. Our most iconic buildings sit empty, not because there is no one willing to occupy them, but because they are unavailable to lease or buy. No occupancy equals no tax revenue for our city. Visitors often find their limited places to shop or eat. For the handful of businesses that are open, we often feel overwhelmed when a city hosts them. I often close early on days like this because we are unable to serve so many. Establishing an ordinance that incentivizes owners of vacant historical properties to lease or sell would benefit our current downtown through tax revenue and creating a customer friendly environment. This is a great way for Angel Camp to go from a ghost town to a thriving tourist attraction. My other source of attention is the parking, which kind of went a little off topic, but I'm going to read it. Uh, Contention is the parking and traffic and work, or lack thereof. I propose a four hour parking room for Main Street. This allows patrons time to eat, shop, or catch a movie. People are often parked in loading zones for days, sometimes making it difficult for our suppliers to deliver goods. Cars are parked in red zones, making it difficult to see pedestrians in the crosswalk. People drive at incredible speeds through the main strip. For the last three years, I have had a full-size dog pickup truck parked in front of my shop nearly every day. It's so large, it obstructs my signage and is hired for time. Some little things, signage at 49 and 4, that directs people to our downtown would be nice. Friday morning, the city cleans downtown with a blower, a blower that soils my outside seating and fills the air with gasoline and dirt. It's very unpleasant for my customers. I hope the city will take immediate action on the vacant buildings and parking downtown to do so promote businesses and generate revenue. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yeah, me. Okay. All right. Um, I think I think I just I, I, I just wanted to say um, I I do agree with um, the council's comments on not money in the water with the residential, including residential in this particular ordinance. I think I think that the focus really does need to be on the commercial building that where the biggest problem lies and. That's what I expect. for you to continue this and get a dance. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
all the same people have to keep a set of all correct? Even maintain, monitor by the owner, keep them in compliance with section 17. As long as it's untapped, windows are not broke out within 24 hours, something's got to be filled or broken with no. The residents would fall under the same exact. Even when it's being checked, and then on the same thing, I have to have a question about what is going to happen for me. So, like this month, we're going to get the fund. Where I, I where would that money? Like, it, yeah,
I will second. Okay. I am seven. Resolution six. Award contracts to Bartle Wells Associates and authorize the city administrator to execute all necessary documents to proceed with the water and sewer rate set. Okay, so several months ago, um, some requests uh,
Okay, so what would be the next step? I'd like to be able to point to the edge of the The item is brought before you regarding the police chief contract. Uh, this is an amendment to the original contract. Um, you guys started negotiations about a month ago. And we're all agreeing to include the following and increase the uniform amount to 500. Uh, addition of longevity pay to be calculated at two and a half following a five year city employment, uh, along with incentive pay for post management certificate and post uh, executive certificate for a maximum of five percent. Uh, vacation allowance to match the dedicated. Well, I will say that I saw the contract with a whole lot of other changes, right? So I did check with the there was a lot of formatting yeah. and um, and clean up language that would not affect anything other than what we need to do in our design. So I would say that
to approve resolution 2378, granting authority for the city administrator to plan and to place an employee above our step three. So before you is resolution 2378, allowing the city administrator to uh, hire an employee above step three. So the city has been recruiting for the plant operator three since March of this year. We recently conducted an interview and have found a qualified candidate. However, they're asking to start at a higher pace. So um, this is the item that I'm bringing before you. If you would uh, adopt the plan to complete the staff for water wage water. Okay, I think.
So, yeah, I guess there's a whole thing going on. So, so that would go.